Hey, we on TikTok with it now, y'all. And of course, Instagram and Twitter, y'all can follow on all those. But anyway, YouTube, team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. Happy Saturday. Hope y'all are doing great. Hope everything is good in your life. And if it's not, okay, that's fine. You got time to turn it around. That's it. I know stuff be getting troubling, stuff be getting annoying, people be getting annoying. But just try to let stuff go. Just try to brush it off. Uh, anyway, Justin Houston, he spoke to the media today. Well, first John Harbaugh did, and um, Hollywood was out there. He wasn't practicing, but he was working on himself and whatnot. Uh, so that's good. So that gives us somewhat of a maybe indication that he may be close, but Harbaugh said they're not going to rush it. And you, don't, you never want to put somebody back out there too early uh, because you don't want them to re-injure whatever current injury they have. So that's, we completely understand. And again, with Jimmy Smith, quick recap, it's a low ankle sprain. He'll be out a couple of weeks. So he should be ready for the first reg regular season game, um, but we'll see. But Jimmy Smith is good to go. So that's a beautiful thing that he will not miss an extended period of time. Big relief. Lamar... <laughs> <laughs> that boy was back out there today. Um, they said that Lamar, I think Jameson Hensley said he was like 11 for 19. Uh, he said he threw a lot of short passes. They, they didn't want to put a full workload on him, which is understandable because if somebody's missed uh, a significant amount of time, you can't just pile up everything all at once. Um, but they did say that uh, he was more accurate than what the numbers would show, but they said that they were like four drops, so... I said, okay, cool, no problem, they want to drop, let them drop now, rather than the regular season, let them get it out of their system now, fine, cool, but anyway, <laughs> ooh, Justin Houston, Justin Houston, this had to be, uh, this was a very quick uh, presser, um, and I told y'all before, by the time we get through training camp, the Ravens will have interviewed every single player on the 90-man roster. They will have interviewed every single coach because these pressers, which we appreciate, we love them. Trust me, we love them because I don't know if other fans, teams, or other teams do it like this. But straight up, Ravens, you may not agree with all the moves that they make and the way they do certain things and whatnot. But as a fan, they put on for us a lot. They put on for us a whole lot. With the way that they run stuff, they do so much for Ravens fans. It's great. Um, but anyway, uh, Justin Houston, when he spoke today, um, he just talked about the whole process, what he's looking to do, why he chose the Ravens. Um, and he said it was a scheme fit. He said he felt like this scheme was better than some other ones. And they asked him, but hold up. Was it true that you, you received a better offer, more money from other teams, but you still chose the Ravens? Yeah, yeah. And then, then I think it was Jamison Hensley. Jamison Hensley been on fire today. But I think he it was him that said, whoa, 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 whoa. But was it the Steelers that you turned down? Well, did, did the Steelers offer you money? And he said, hey, I, I was so close to being a Steeler. I was so close to signing with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we remember when the, uh, the report came out uh, from, shout out to the NFL chick. And she said it. She said that he received... Other offers from AFC North teams for more money, but he wanted to be a Raven. And that says a lot to the Ravens organization. That says a lot to their front office. That says a lot to the way they do things. Now, that wasn't even the part about his presser that stuck out to me the most. The part that stuck out to me the most, and of course, we've heard the story in the report that Marcus Peters was calling Justin Houston. Marcus Peters was a big part of the Justin Houston recruitment because, of course, they both used to play in Kansas City. But this is the kicker. This is what really got me. The fact that he said, and we heard that Marcus Peters had been doing some recruiting. So he hit him up. But we heard about that uh, recently, that he hit him up maybe recently. But Justin Houston, he said that as soon as the season ended, Marcus Peters hit him up and said, what you doing this year? Who are you playing next year? You need to come here. And to me, that spoke volumes, and I'm going to tell you why. Because Marcus Peters, he plays on that defense firsthand. He's a starter with the Ravens defense. He's been playing with them for the past couple of years, and he has made a huge, significant impact on the team. 
But he also is a very big student of the game. He's a very, very extremely smart player. I feel like his smarts are not appreciated enough by fans, whether you're a Ravens fan or not. I know you could say this and that about him. Oh, he may not be that physical. Oh, he's not the best tackler. Da, 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 da. But his smarts, man, they don't get talked about enough. But with Marcus Peters, when Justin Houston said that, I was like, oh, Marcus Peters knew. He knew what a big issue on this Ravens team was last season, and that was the pass rush. That was the pass rush because if Marcus Peters is hitting you up from jump as, as soon as the season is over, if Marcus Peters is on the phone with you, hey, where you, where you going this office? Where you going next season? You got to come through. If he's saying that to you as soon as the season is over, then that lets you know right then and there, like, okay, Marcus Peters knows what the problem is. And we've known that the problem, the, the Ravens have had a pass rush issue for a little while now. It, it's been a problem ever since Terrell Suggs been gone. It's, it's, it's been rough. It's been very rough. Um, so, and even with them adding Yannick Ngakwe, them having Matt Judon, Tyus Bowser, he had a role. But it, his role last year obvious, and over the past couple of years is obviously nowhere close to what his role is going to be moving forward. They've had Pernell McPhee, of course, for the past couple of years, but the, the, the pass rush, it just has not been enough. It hasn't been enough. And in a game, the playoff game against the Bills, where these dudes, like, it's like they were telling that whole game. It's like they were telling the Ravens, Josh Allen was telling the Ravens, come get me. Come, come try. Come try to get me. I bet you won't. I bet you won't. Because they passed the ball so much that game. And I mean, they, got, they had a nice, a nice group of receivers there. And they still do. But still, they passed, like they were not running the ball at all, man. <laughs> These dudes were not running the ball at all. And it's like they knew the Ravens' pass rush was an issue. And, and really more so, because I know the Ravens will get QB hits. I know they will get pressure. But again, like I said, sacks, sacks are the close. That's the closing deal right there. And again, I, I would have to disagree respectfully, of course, with Wink when he says sacks are overrated. I just, no, I don't think that they are. Because sacks, close, they finish the play. Play's over. Pressure, play's not over. QB hits, play's not over. Now, that can start to mess with a QB's mind throughout the course of the game because if he keeps getting hit from left, right, front, center, everywhere, then that's going to mess with the, with, it, with the clock in his head. So when he actually does have time, he's not going to think he has time because he's been getting hit so much throughout the game. But a sack, a sack, it does that and more. So it messes with the QB's clock in his head, and it also brings him down and actually finishes the play. So with Justin Houston, something that I'm sure Marcus Peters is more than aware of, especially after playing with him too, but something that Marcus Peters knows, something that we know too, is that with Justin Houston, the production is there. It has been there. It, and, and it's been consistent production throughout his whole career. So with, with, with that, if you add that to the Ravens, and again, with the pass rush, this going into the pass rush this year, it was not a, an area of weakness, in my opinion. It was an area of unknown. Because, again, we just don't know. We didn't know who was going to be there. We didn't know how these guys were going to perform as pass rushers. Again, Tyus Bowles will be on a full-time role now. Adafi away, Dalen Hayes, a lot of unknown with that. So with the pass rush, adding a Justin Houston gives you a known it gives you something that you know. He talked about it in the presser today. He said he, one of the other reasons why he chose the Ravens was because this would be a position where he can get in one-on-one -on -one matchups. And that says a lot about he, how he feels about the scheme. In my opinion, it says a lot about how he feels about this scheme. And it says a lot about how he feels about the coaching and also the personnel too. So I... um. It's, it's, it's really exciting. This whole Justin Houston thing, I mean, initially it took a little bit for it to sink in. And I remember, I, again, y'all know, y'all already know, I did not think that this was going to happen. I did not think. 
And they asked him about the process too. They were like, "Hey, well, why, why now? Why not early?" And he said he just he was just waiting, sorting everything out. He wanted to make sure he made the right decision and whatnot. And we can respect that because he did not he didn't rush it. He didn't rush it. Um, and and I liked how the, just the way that he spoke because the way that Justin Houston spoke today. Uh, it reminded me a lot of um, when they initially interviewed uh, T. Martin. Um, and, and when you just hear his voice, his tone of voice, and the confidence that he has when he speaks. Because if some, somebody could tell you something, and it could be the truth. Like, um, like for example, uh, uh, L- Lamar Jackson is... Um, Lamar Jackson is... Uh, He's um he's the, the the Ravens starting quarterback. That's that's who this starting quarterback is. It's Lamar. If it was somebody who didn't know anything about the Ravens and didn't know anything about their depth chart, about their personnel, and whatnot, and you tell them like that that Lamar Jackson is their starting quarterback, they probably not gonna believe you, cause you don't have any confidence. But if you tell them Lamar Jackson is Ravens starting quarterback, they believe you. It's all about the way you say it. And that confidence. And again, Justin Houston has it. He spoke with it. He exemplified that in that presser today. Uh, so it was a beautiful thing to see. It was a beautiful thing to watch. And um, I- I'm excited for what he's going to do uh, as a Raven. Now, I'll be even more excited when he changed that ugly number. But again, they got to get through all the cuts and all that good stuff. So shout out to the Ravens. Shout out to y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And... I'll see you very, very soon. We are out.